Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast, where I, Dennis Rostaro, and my co-host, Joel Reeves, discuss internet technology and how it can be used to save you a ton of cash. Joel has returned from his two-week break, so everyone can just stop emailing me. We all miss Joel. I'm glad he's back, but geez, people. Today, we're going to discuss some Nielsen numbers that shows just how many people are leaving pay TV. We'll also cover some new cord-cutting gadgets and services that will be hitting the market in 2017. So let's just get the show started. Go ahead, play the song. Joel's back, everybody. Yay! I meant that more for me. I, I don't think anyone out there really cares. <laughs> I'm sure they did. I, I like Dennis uh, and I were like text or texting back and forth about this like uh, Joel head thing. He kept dropping on the podcast, and it was cracking me up because it's a really disturbing image. Oh, for all the Joel heads out there yeah. that were missing you. Yeah, no, that's not a that. I hope that's not a thing. Well, but <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad people are listening to the podcast in general. But well, it's just know. weird to have to um, talk into a microphone by yourself for a half hour. Oh God, vamping by yourself. Yeah, and it's I was, and worst. I was. T- and I'm talking about the jailbreak and an Amazon Fire TV, which, as you know, I do not like that term. Yeah, not a fan. So, you know, I was kind of angry in a room by myself in a microphone. <laughs> it's not healthy. That, that sounds like a bad documentary. It, it is. It is. I mean, I'm glad people listen because I can actually pull up data and see people are downloading it. Right. Otherwise, that would be really, I mean, really sad. Really depressing if it was <laughs> if, if you couldn't get like some. So thank you. For those of you that are downloading, yeah, because you make uh, me feel better about myself. Because otherwise, if if I if you guys aren't listening, then I am just a sad soul yelling at the rain, yelling at, in a microphone into a room yeah, in a room not good. by myself. Sad. Yeah, the microphone's <laughs> not even plugged in. No, it, it might it might as well not be. It might I might as well just have an unplugged micro. It might as well just be like a tube. Like, yeah, <laughs> then I'm just. <laughs> well, I am glad to be back. Uh, it was it was a fun little break. Uh, sorry to leave you hanging, but um, I was out of town. So nice to be back here in in the headquarters in the glorious uh, headquarters of GroundedReason.com in my basement. Yeah, for uh, now. For Hope, now, hopefully. yeah, that's right. Trying to. You know, get a spot. Looking we'll see how that works. Out. Space. Yeah. So <laughs> like grown up. All legitimate. Yeah. So I wanted to talk today though about a couple things. Well, first off, Nielsen numbers came out on cord cutting. Oh yeah. And this... I'm a I'm a huge nerd for that because I can actually decipher how many of y'all are cutting the cord out there. And I have some I was actually kind of shocked um at the data that I pulled up because they did, um, this is quarter three of 2016 yeah, and, uh, they compare it, you know, of quarter two because yeah. that's what makes sense. Cause you know, people do different things in different times of the yeah. year, but year over year months yeah. should be kind of, they should line up. Yeah. It, one would think. So you compare quarter three of 2015 to quarter three of 2016. Exactly. And get a sense. In quarter three of 2015, it was, Almost a hundred. It was actually a little over a hundred million uh, yeah. pay TV subscribers. Uh, quarter three of 2016, 98.2 millions. Yeah, that's it's huge. a big difference. Because you gotta gotta also remember that though our population is not growing rapidly, it is growing. It's right? growing. Like, yeah, so- and I was gonna I was gonna like because it's got. If, if you look at that number alone, you're saying okay, so. Uh, one point seven nine million people. Yeah, but it's actually a little bit more than that. It is because you're talking about new households are coming in, um, so it's probably like one point eight five or something like that. Well, say total households went f- increased by about about four hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah, so, so that's about right. Yeah, yeah. So and so if you look, that's just the pay TV cut. If you look at 
the the way that Nielsen breaks it down is they break it down into broadband only broadcast and broadband and only broadcast. Right. So, and those are people that are watching TV on those technology, obviously broadcast, but for the broadband, it's not like you just have broadband. It's that you have broadband and you're streaming. Of course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're from, from quarter three, 2015, to quarter three, 2016, broadband only went from 3.58 million to 4.6 million. Yeah, so almost a hundred, uh, almost, yeah, that's, al- almost, that's a almost a million. That's almost a million. It's 972,000. Yeah, I'm no 000. mathematician, but that's almost a million. It's almost a million. Um, for broadcast and um, broadband, it went from, it went from 6.8 to 8.1. Wow. Yeah. So it's 1.4. Yeah, so 1.4 million. And then uh, only broadcast went from, that's just people using an antenna. Really didn't go up that uh, much. It really went, it only went from 5.9 to, well, actually 5.99, so 6 to 6.1. So 6, 6 million to 6.1 million. It's 100,000 people. It is, but that's just broadcast. That's just antenna. The yeah. really, I'm saying your, your cord most cutters of it is are actually, typically going to be the other folks. It's, it's most of it is actually the people getting uh, TV content, what we traditionally think of TV content, uh, over the internet is what you're saying. Typically, yeah. I mean, yeah, you sure. You can go and get an antenna and do it, but you're, yeah. it's, it, it's not a, com- it's not comparable to a cable package. It's no. just your network TV. No, no, no. But the people who are actually trying to maybe replace or, you yeah, know, at least... To have a comparable experience to that of someone who probably going to be cable streaming. Package. Yeah. And, and and to me, like, the, the big story there is that the the numbers are dramatically and, and rapidly moving in in the right direction if you're you're for the reform of the paid tv market yeah right and i mean here's the thing though because it, it it's if you take all those numbers and you add them up you're talking 2.5 million cord cutters join the ranks in now a year. is that households or is that individuals households that's still households okay so and i believe the average household has 2.5 million or i'm sorry 2.5 people in it so it ends Is up that right? being yeah uh no because there's like 400 million folks here roughly right, so edit that out i it, will it's 350 million i think in the united states right yeah about. probably and there's 100 million so so out of that 2.5 kids is i think the number because i know okay so it ends up being like three because i have you know i have 2.5 kids what are you editing it out now I'm Why, sorry. Because that was funny. Well, I don't 2.5 know. Kids. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't tell what's staying in and what's not. I don't know. But the the point is, it's more people than the numbers we're actually describing because we're talking about households. Yeah, we're talking about households. So, given that, it's it's actually a really really big number. I'm going to make this dirt simple. It's a big number. Yeah, two point four in a year. In a year is huge. And the thing that really makes me feel like it's well, that shows me that it's ramping up is quarter two of twenty sixteen. Um, that number was at seventeen point seven million. Yeah. Cord cutters. I mean, total. Like if you if you take the hard numbers, you're talking, you know, seven. You know, seventeen point seven. In quarter three, this this was. 18.848, so 18.5, 18.85 million. Right. So that's a million in a quarter, from quarter two to quarter three. That's nuts. And then, you know, so I guess the other million and a half was in the quarters prior, the three right. quarters, other quarters that, that year. So not to, you know, steal the lead on the, on this, like, story here, but... What tells me that this is like a serious trend is the second part of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Which is what's going on with the CES. The Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah. And and I was surprised uh, when we were, you you know, you sent me some articles about this to like peruse before we started talking. 
I was surprised how many of these things were, uh, you know, out of the show were directly reflective of this, like, trend with uh, cord cutting. It, yeah, it, I was actually a lot. surprised because last year, I think, like, Sling was kind of the bell of the ball. Sling TV. Yep. I think that... For, for cord cutters. There yeah. was a lot of other stuff there, too. But, I mean, Sling TV was the... the, the I mean, I'm sure somebody will you know, tweet and correct me. But I just remember in my memory, Sling the TV. Internet is the internet is angry. They wrote, they're all, they're always angry and they're the always internet right. Is angry. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not any one person. It's if you added up all the feelings of all of humanity, we're apparently angry. Well, yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah, that's what I've derived. If I, <laughs> if I was an alien and I was looking at the internet, that's what I would get. Yeah. So, I mean, as you were saying though, with the, I mean, the Nielsen, I mean, numbers are numbers and numbers say one thing, but you can always tell what's happening yeah. when you can see where the money's going. People are putting their money where, the, you know, their mouth is. Like they really believe this is where things are going. And these aren't dummies, right? Like these aren't people that, the people that are backing, you know, DirecTV and... DirecTV now. Yeah. Now. Right, like now. Right. <laughs> um, like the angry now. See previous episode where we mock marketing people for silly ideas. Like, like yeah. Like say now after everything. But anyways, DirecTV now is a really good service. It's just a silly name. Right. Um but yeah, I, like you can tell, like the people that are backing this really, really are taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge industry. The paid TV industry is gigantic, and and they think this is going to take a big bite. Yeah, well, like I mean, Dish Network has looked like it's going all in because one of the thing, like they own Sling TV. Yep, and the one of the cool things they put out. Um, is and all the stuff I talk about, I'll either you know link if I have an article in the blog, I'll link back to it, yeah. and if I don't, I'll link you to someone who does. Yeah, because there's there's one that you have. Is it the Sling one? That yeah, you have that, an article. On? Yeah, they they basically they have this thing called Air TV, which is going to take your over the air antenna and integrate it into an Android box streaming box. So it's the intent is to have. You know, all of your over-the-air channels and all of your streaming services all in one box. Which, to me, I mean, that's that's not the grail, but that's close. It's close, and it's been attempted before, and it hasn't – I mean, there's been some attempts, and it hasn't panned out. There's always been some type of, you know, kludgy issue. All right. Um, I'm excited about this one, though, because – they're using a straight up Android TV box, which yeah. is gonna give you access to Google Play Store. Which so you I think is a smart way to get Yeah, because you're gonna have I mean, you won't have iTunes unless you're on Apple, but you got everything else. I mean, it's gonna have your Amazon uh instant video, you're gonna have Netflix, Hulu, all those uh niche channels. Any yep. anything you want that's on Google Play Store, you can put on the thing. Yeah. It's gonna have all of your over the air channels. That includes your your Roku, right? Like, well, it's basically anything you can put on a Roku. Yeah. For the most part, you can put on an Android TV box. Gotcha. For the most part, so because Roku, you know, they have their own Roku store. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can find some niche thing that's on one and not on the other. But for the gen most part, all of your well, top-notch stuff will be there. I guess what's what's curiosity to me is how long until Roku comes out with something that integrates a. Uh, uh, an over-the-air uh, antenna. Yeah, well, that's what I've always... I mean, I've wondered, but... <sighs> they haven't done it yet. No, they haven't yet. But this has got to put some pressure. It does. I mean, Roku is... I mean, I for a company that is, you know, trading blows with the likes of Google and Apple TV... Yeah. And they're, they're not outside... They make a streaming device, and that's what they do. Um, and they've gotten into the TV market with some smart TVs now, because you can actually get the Roku OS on some smart yep. TVs. Yep. But they've held their own against giants. Yeah. So they punch way above their weight. Yeah. So I'm wondering. Go. I mean, I'm wondering if they're worrying, if they're looking at this as because if you talk to some people, they really they kind of laugh off OTA, which I don't get at all. Like over the air TV. Yeah. Um, they kind of think that co the future of cord cutting is all streaming. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I, I get where a lot of that's coming from. At least personally, I do. In that most of the shows that I care about are things that would stream. But certainly, uh, everything sports-oriented is very antenna central. A lot NFL, NFL specifically. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's really just, you know, your football, um, some tennis, some of the NASCAR, I think, shows up there. Every soccer, once in a while. do they as well? Yeah, yeah, I think NBC has some. I mean... Yeah, because I thought I thought that's where World Cup was. Last yeah, year. well, I mean, well, it's like a lot of the, you know, I mean, if they buy the contracts or the licensing, you get it. You wanted to watch the Olympics, you needed an antenna, or you could have streamed it. Actually, a lot of people. Did. Yeah, yeah, you had an article about that. Yeah, and I guess that's my point is if if you're a sports fan, at least in the United States, that at least well, see, it's really largely a, means you're going to be watching football. Yeah, a lot of football is a big thing here, and if you want to watch football, you need an antenna. Yeah. Um. Well. For the most, it's the easiest way to do it. It, it is the it is by far the easiest because you have to do a whole bunch of figuring you, out. Does there's this a whole article service, again. Yes. Not to, man, I am like plugging like crazy. I'm like little Dutch boy with all of the the plugs <laughs> I'm doing about the blog. But but there is an article literally just came out. Yeah, uh, actually, I talked about this last podcast by yeah. myself in the room because Joel wasn't oh, yeah. here. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't <laughs> laugh that loud. People have their earbuds in. But yes, you did talk. I'll, I'll turn up the compression and you they did, won't you even did hear You did talk all by yourself about, about See, he doesn't know people. Sad, sad Joel, Joel wasn't here. He doesn't know what we talked about last no, week. No, no. He doesn't have, a, all, he doesn't have a iTunes no, podcast No, it was all app. between you guys and Dennis. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, I, so, so I, I would think Roku would, you know. Yeah, I was Start thinking about. I, it. I thought that that would be a thing, especially, and I'll get to it in a bit because I want to talk a little bit more about this. But the yeah, Mohu Mohu actually has a little solution for this as well. Oh. A little different, um, a little different strategy, but you know they're attacking it from a different angle. But it's pretty uh, what they've come up with. I think is pretty ingenious. Um, but the cool thing that I like about this, because yeah, you got your Android TV box, and you can hook and an just antenna to to loop people back in. Which device are we talking? Oh, about? this is. I'm sorry. This is the uh, the. It's called the Air TV. The yep. dishes. Uh, Air TV dish maker of Sling TV. Now, uh, a lot of people have been asking, "Do you need Sling TV?" No, you don't. But if you buy their box, they give you fifty dollars. Sling TV credit, and if I remember correctly, Sling is nineteen dollars. Well, month? it's 20. twenty. It's twenty for one. It's twenty for the Disney base package. Okay. Um, the colors are escaping me right now. The blue and the orange. Yeah, the blue, yeah. Right, but the ones with the Disney types, like the ESPN and the Disney channels. So it's that's twenty bucks. Let's call it two to two and a half months worth of credit yeah. you're giving you. Or if you get both packages, then you're talking one month and you got ten bucks left over. But yeah. Um but still they're gonna get but you it's a dent. That's nice. It is and they'll let you try it out. And if you don't like Sling TV, it works like an Android box, so you can just stick whatever else you want on there to yep. watch. You know, Hulu or you can get Hulu or you can get Netflix or you could get, you know, get any other service the, that you want to dogs. throw on there. And or Amazon, you know, because and I've said it before, personally, I think the best bang for your buck is just getting yourself some way to watch network television like an antenna and buying the cable shows a la carte from Amazon Instant Video. Uh, yeah, and between that and Prime, yeah, I, I struggle to understand what else you would need, right? Right. I like mean, you if might want you know, the occasional thing here and there. But. Or if you're like a news junkie and you want to watch, you know, like CNN and you have to watch cable news. Which news I, makes me sad. It makes me sad too. I cry. And, in a, you know, when I'm in that room by myself, talking to myself. Um, <laughs> so the cool, the cool thing that I really like, and this is such a, it's such a subtle touch, but I love it. Um, the remote with, that comes with your air TV will like, you can pair it with most TVs. So it'll actually control the power that's and the nice. volume. Yeah. So you're talking about you're talking a, a single remote and that's a big deal. Well, like, especially when you're coming from a cord cutting, cause I have a Roku and I have like, you know, an antenna. So I have to change inputs if I want to watch yeah. my, you know, if I want to watch the antenna, you don't have to do that with this. It's all in one input and you got your yeah. volume and your power. You got, you're back down to one remote. 
And it comes. It's the one that comes with it. Well, it's not like you don't have to go buy a universal well, and to program me, that, that to work. That about. sticks to like you know the the theme, which is like they're trying to simplify. Right. Yeah. Right. And, they're getting and, there, and they and they they really are right. Like if you're talking about integrating an antenna, and most of the services out there, and you're getting to where a single remote will run most of the functions you need to do. Yep. That's pretty close to as simple as it's going to get. Yep. And, I mean, it goes up to 4K video. So, you know, your 1080p. It's way beyond anything I've ever It's fine. Heard. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm the, I am of the school of thought of if I don't look at the pretty pictures, then I'm happy with the pretty picture in my house. I've had glasses since I was three years old. My eyes are bad, anyways. Right, because I can only tell. I can't tell the difference. No, I can only tell if I go to the store and yeah. then I and I can see <laughs> if my. If you put them next to each other, right. I can tell. Right, right. but sure. if I'm in my house, I think it looks great. Yeah, you know, as long as I don't go to the store and see the TV I have next to like the newer TV. Yeah, you don't then I'm like, do that. so I just don't do that. I just I, I just that. don't look at that. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> just, ignorance is bliss. Exactly. So, so I mean, dish. That's two years in a row that they've put out. Some you know pretty cool cord pretty big stuff big stuff yeah now getting to um oh and one last thing I forgot to tell this they'll even because they know you need an antenna they'll even install your antenna for you oh and I read that and I was like that's actually pretty awesome you got to pay because, for it but well still yeah do but it. I but I would gl- I'm telling you right now if if people who listen haven't figured it out. I'm not particularly handy. So uh, I would gladly pay someone to climb up on my roof and install an antenna. Yeah, and, and from what I rather saw, than it's that. like, I think, I think, and this, I'm pretty sure, but don't quote me, it's uh, between 99 bucks and 150 bucks for them to come. Money well spent. I guess that's depending whether they got to climb on your roof or not. Our, I will say, our like little emergency room down the road would charge that much to pop my shoulder back in in uh, joint yeah, after I fell off my roof. That's probably so, you're probably right there. Yeah, you know, that's that's totally money well spent. It is. It's like yeah, it's insurance at that point. Like you know, you're insuring yourself that you don't have to. I don't have to fall, fall off your roof. All right. <laughs> it's fall insurance. Right. So, so, so with Mohu, the makers of you know some pretty good antennas i got one on my roof uh the sky they are doing i mean it it kind of accomplishes the same thing but you you have to own the streaming device already yeah because what it'll what it'll do is they'll have they're making a streaming app that you can get and they're releasing an antenna called the airwave the airwave and you'll love this is a the I, I think it's the first one I've never seen anything like this where it's it combines a OTA over the air and Wi-Fi so you don't need to use a coax cable yeah. you you kind of stick the thing wherever you want so it works you know, like so basically the best spot in your house to like receive television and then it'll it'll transcode and broadcast it through a stream to the app that you stick on you know whatever device you're gonna going to use and i was reading about this and i got to tell you so like my dad's a radio frequency engineer Mm -hmm. so like to him this is like you know right up his alley he would love that like me i yada 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 right through it not because i don't think it's fascinating it's because i don't understand it's voodoo i was like (laughs) okay sure it does good stuff i like good stuff I'll pay for good stuff, right? Like right. that was well, so. I generally it's, got it's got, and it's. I saw the the, the device, the footprint. It's really it, like it's small because it looks like a standard antenna. And it's got a t- it's a tiny little device in the bottom of it, which I guess does all the transcoding um, over right. to a Wi-Fi stream or a stream something. Excuse me, that sounded ridiculous. Until uh, uh, to a you know a stream that you can throw over Wi-Fi, and, and I I follow it all up to that point. Okay, where it's like. How is it possible it's converting it to a stream? Well, it's, I don't get it. Because it. it goes on your network. Right. It, it's a network of device, and then it just, you know, it 
Because I have something it's called something proprietary. They figured out. Well, I have something called the HD Home Run, and mm. it essentially does that. It'll turn it into um, it, it's just a device that sits on your network. It picks up um, the stream, and it really all it is doing is taking that stream, and then they're inputting it, and you know, quickly transcoding it and putting it into a video format file kind of type. But it's it's streamed. It's not a file. It's just See, it's sending the bits over a stream over to your over your network. This is what makes me think it is possible. I'm not saying it's likely, but it's possible that there are people out there that actually value my input on this podcast because I ask really stupid questions and then you explain important things. That's why I wanted you to come do this with yes, me. Yes, I'm very dumb. I get it. No, it's, no, it's no, no, useful. no. <laughs> I, it's, it's really useful. I, no, I just needed someone to ask, like, you know, good questions. Right. And you're good at my that because you're a curious mind. My eyes gli- uh, glaze over. Otherwise, and it's then me talking to myself it, for a half hour and probably asking a question or saying something. And, like, half the audience is like, what the hell did he what just say? What you really should have done, and I would have, I would have died if you'd done that. Did a Joel impression? Great. No, well, <laughs> I, very similar. I was going to say you should have just started talking in two different voices. Oh, yeah. And had a guest star. Right? Then my <laughs> wife would have walked in and then she would have been like, you know, oh, I've got to call it. the dog. Exactly. Yeah, I hope his insurance covers this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so it, I did read that. It does sound fascinating and, and it's a it's a clever spin on like how to do stuff. Um I, I, and it makes a lot of sense, especially if you're already someone who has a streaming device, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, yeah, then it this works. might be the right right way to go. Right, because it works with, you know, the Amazon Fire TV and Stick, Apple TV, Chromecast, Roku. Roku's entire lineup, yeah. iOS devices, Android, and web. Yeah. So I, we both have Roku 4s, I think, right? Yeah, so that's everything. It's really you just kind of just download a, you know, you throw an app on there. And you're watching your OTA TV alongside of all your, your streaming apps. It's not bad at all. So it, it accomplishes. It's like if you already have same a device. Same objective. It's the same thing. And you're going to spend about the same amount of money because I think it's like a one, maybe a little bit more. Because the thing is 129 for the Roku device. But you still have to buy, the, I mean, for the, I'm sorry, for the Sling TV device or the, what do they call that thing? The Air TV. Um, and then you still have to buy the antenna. Right. But then this, and I'm not sure what the price on this is. Well, I, said I would say then that the best candidates for this are people that already have an antenna and have a streaming device and are toggling back and forth between the two. Yeah, well, see, I already have both. But, I mean, if you want to cut the cord and you have a streaming – like, you, if you have a cut the cord, you have nothing. You're probably just going to go out and buy an Air TV. Yeah. Because that makes sense. And an antenna, because yeah, that's dirt simple, right? But in, if you if you already have an antenna, yeah, then you know, this seems like a really good option. Well, this this is that the antenna's in there though, mm. so I don't know. It's it's kind of a tough call. I'd have to test both and find out, you know, which would probably be the better option to go with. Okay. I already bought the Air TV. I mean, I'm because I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to like wait. Yeah, for them to send me one. So yeah. I just went out and I actually, you know, I just went and bought one, and I'm going to so test it is, and, and see. This is like hot off the press from the CES. Right. Wow, I'm rhyming. Um, and and, uh, I'm, and I'm talking to Mohu to see if I can get my hands on one of their um, airwaves to see if yeah. I can, you know, test that out. Which I think would be slick. Yeah, because that's not available. Because it's one thing I said the Air TV, the dishes, dishes Air is TV. Out. That's that just came out yesterday. The fourth. Right. Yeah. Well, when this gets released, it'll be – yeah, let me let me fix – it just got released last week for all of you listening. Money. Or if you're listening, you know, 10 years from now, it got la- it got released in, uh, you know, the beginning of uh, 2017. Yeah. So. January 4th, right? Uh, right. Well, no, today's the 4th, right? Yeah, I thought it was – Yeah, the 3rd it got released. Okay. It was released January 3rd. I'll edit that out. Um, and um, <laughs> uh, so the reason why I said that is, is basically like this is still pretty pretty new stuff, right? Like all of these uh, new tools and services 
are just now getting released or haven't quite yet been. So I'm sure we're going to end up doing a follow-up on, like, what it is you really think once, you know, you can actually get your hands on the service. Yeah, because I'm really curious, too, with the Mohu device, um, the Airwave, because they, they had this... They're talking about this new technology that they've come up with called uh, ClearPix. Yeah. And it's supposed that to kind of neat. like depixelate. Like if there's – it'll try to smooth out any pixelation that happens. Because over the air TV, sometimes when you convert it to stream – and I've noticed this because I on my HD home run – is if there's a little bit – sometimes there's a little choppiness here or there. I mean if you have a signal that's not tip-top, you know. Yeah. And it looks like that this will help with that. I'm curious though. I mean, I, I I really won't know until I I test is it hands on. But that's what for they're saying. Like using it across different devices. What this thing? Yeah. Well, it'll work on any device. Well, that... but but my point is like the smoothing out of the pixelation. Is that for getting to a smaller form frame? That's possible too. Yeah, because yeah. it depends on that's what, you're what I it down was to. reading it. As. That makes sense. Yeah, that 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 definitely makes sense. I mean, like because you know as you. Oh, God, I don't want to use this term because it's loaded, but for lack of a better one, as you compress the image, as you make the image actually physically smaller. Cor- yeah, right, right. Right, like you got to get a crisper pi- pixelation if you're going to like mm-hmm. hold up the quality, right? So that's how I was reading it, but I could be wrong. No, that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, those were the two things that really caught my eye from CES, but there's another one that I think – um, you is were this, excited about yeah, and this, I like too, but I think, I don't know why I just kind of gravitated towards the streamers. Huh. Um, but what Tableau is yeah, doing, I thought this was neat and they're putting out a kind of a, they have a couple things. Yeah. Actually they are. And I was kind of wondering, you know, they're, it's kind of, Oh, there it's a deviation from their current business model. Cause they're, if you don't know, Tableau is a company. They make DVRs for your antenna, for your and. But what they what they're doing now is they're putting out something called the Tableau Droid, uh, Android based software DVR. And I guarantee you, they were going to have to change that name. Yeah, because you can't drop Android in the middle of that. Well, Droid, you can't. Yeah, Droid. George Lucas is going to come to their house. <laughs> Because that's what he did. Androids were originally called droids. Remember uh, that? Like when they first came out, they would make that noise. Yeah, they were like, do. droid. And it got like, that only lasted for like a couple months oh, before gosh. George Lucas came and inserted Jar Jar Binks into all of their lives. So, so. And um, they were like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite podcasts, I know we talked about it at one point, is this uh, podcast where they, they basically make fun of bad movies. And, oh, uh, the We Hate Movies We guys. Hate Movies. I love when they do the These George Lucas. These guys are great. And they call George Lucas the gobbler. And God bless him. Cause <laughs> God bless him for bringing us Star Wars. You know, I my life has been enriched by Same. it. It's wonderful. I, I but am thankful he is, uh, that he brought it to us. He is an interesting personality is the way I will describe it. And their impersonation of him. On on that podcast, a shameless plug for the We Hate Movies podcast. Oh, it's great! People. They're great. It's it's too good. And their their reviews they do of the the Phantom Menace, and I think they do Clone Wars too. Um, Tableau. Right. Uh, the word droid is uh, owned by uh, Lucasfilm. I think I saw some Mithril's. In- I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they do all of it. <laughs> I. Uh, Tableau, I find your f- lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, but yeah, you know, you got you got a point. And, and getting back to the the Tableau uh, tools they're putting out there. Here, let me bring up the article. Uh, the, uh, there were a couple of them that I thought were interesting. Yeah, well, the like, the, the 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 Android based software is really what surprised me is it's a subscription based kind of. Um, DVR software. Yeah, that was one of the models. So it was three nine uh three dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Yeah, but you need to, an Nvidia Shield. It's basically an, a certain type yeah. of Android box. Yeah. Um, and because what they do is they they give you the device has like um, it's a USB over the air uh, tuner. So yeah. you just plug one of those in, and there's a couple that work 
with uh, this. It's like a USB dongle that you can put a coax cable into. And so the way I read this is basically it provides you with the DVR service that you then can use. Like an external drive. Just like an external drive. And they've got a couple of different iterations of it, but all of them basically boil down to you can have a DVR for over-the-air television and it's three three ninety nine a month. It's three ninety nine a month, right? And really, I think that's really covering like your guide subscription yep. and giving them a little. They, really, this is a this is a clever way they can sell you a guide subscription. Yeah, which and it's it's a fourteen day guide. Which, if you think about it, I mean, I've never gone more than seven days out in my guide to ever record anything right without right. you know setting up a season pass. Yeah, so it's their software. They give you a guide. And you're kind of buying the components to make it work because you're yeah. getting yourself you, you, an NVIDIA Shield, um, which is a great streaming device. It's yeah. an Android box as well. Um, and, you know, you're throwing in a USB dongle that um, connects it. And I think the the Hopage, I could never say that right, WinTV Dual HD USB tuner stick um, is one thing that it works. And there's also a Tableau tuner. Um, that you can purchase. Um, and, you know, just use those devices together and plug your antenna into it. And, and that's then that. that. You're done. You just, you're three ninety nine a month uh, subscription. You got yourself a DVR. Yeah, and, and that's how I read it all. I mean, like, so if you're someone who's like, well, like Dennis, who's streaming, you know, a lot of his content or buying it, uh, for shows really, really likes, this doesn't probably make a lot of sense for you. But if you're someone who's recording shows off of particularly like network television or, you know, sporting events or things like that, this seems like a really cool option. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, another thing they're doing is, and this is, this is very similar to the device I mentioned earlier, the HD Home Run, is um, it's a live antenna anywhere stick. So yeah. really, you just it, really quick. Can we put stick on that no fly list for terms? Yeah, you know that it's like now now and stick like everything's a stick. Yep. Unless it's made out of wood, no, not a I stick. don't want it to be called a stick anymore. Now I know I don't have any authority in the world. Well, if even if, in my own home, you know what, my you, children. If run enough this house. people right now, I'm going to do an experiment. If you're out there. And you're listening, and you listen to enough of us, like, you know, but you're not subscribed. Like, you, you know, you, you check on us every so often. Hit the subscribe button because, especially in iTunes, because then the rankings will kind of, you know, it will rise to the top and more people will listen to the show. And if the more people listen to the show, then we can probably tell them, you know, if we can get, a, if we can get like a million listeners, we can say, look, we don't want your stick stuff anymore. And you know what? Here's here's why I think that's going to work. Because I'm sure people out there are just as outraged as I am, I am. about the use of the word stick. Right. And this now and, stuff can go too. Yeah, well, that's sarcasm because I don't think anyone else cares at all. But it's to just, make this work, it's don't us, I, no? It's us two nerds. No, I think that's it's it. everyone out there. And so, so let's <laughs> – Let's hit that subscribe button. <laughs> so, oh, I still encourage you to subscribe. <laughs> don't get me wrong. So we can Please build. Do. We can build an army, and you know, we can correct we'll these We'll march on <laughs> somewhere and tell people to stop doing stuff. I swear. Um, but no. So, but <laughs> getting back to Tableau, um, it's it's similar to this HDO run device, and. All you do is kind of plug your antenna into it, and it uses its voodoo magic to turn it into a signal you can stream over your network. Yeah, I mean, again, I I am absolutely – it's like Weekend at Bernie's 2. It's straight up voodoo. <laughs> I have no idea how it works, but it does work. <laughs> so – so those and then so the, for the they just I guess Tableau just wanted to unload three things around CS yeah. 2017 because they announced they're doing cloud DVR storage, which it's another big deal. I'm a fan of because yeah. I don't have to worry about loading a hard drive onto the device every time it fills uh, and, up. And I guess tell you like any DVR I've ever had, like even going back to like my 
you know, first generation TiVo, right? Like having to like go back and delete stuff and whatnot. It's just obnoxious. It's a, it's obnoxious on my laptop. Right. Right. Like let alone on my television. Yeah. And I'm a fan of, I have, I mean, I have a cloud, I use Apple's uh, iCloud, sure. but then I also have a Western digital, my cloud in my house for the stuff that I don't like sure. trust. I know this is ridiculous old miser stuff, but you know, some things I just kind of want on my own private cloud. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have a my cloud for that sort of thing and for like backups and such, just so I know that I have them and they're mm. easily accessible. Um, and then, you know, I use iCloud, but for like, I'm a big fan of not having to worry about what device I'm on. Yeah. And just being able to load anything from Was the any company, device. the other. Oh, thing? Unity's really good for that yeah. too. Unity's interesting um, because. While it's it, it behaves like a cloud service, it really just takes all of yeah. your devices. It's actually really a client thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It integrates it, it, it all kind of, It kind of makes it seem like you have your own cloud. Yeah. Um, but Which, really, it just it's a device integration. The discovery it uses the element of that is oh, what I thought was really brilliant. Oh, it was great. It was like, what, two episodes ago? You can check it out. It's called yeah, Unity. Yeah, I think it was two. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was an interview with the, the, with the founder with of the company. CEO, yeah. So it was really, you know, I, I he was a great guy. He would, like We had a really good conversation about the product, though. Yeah. Like really, I'm surprised that they were able to pull it off because they're they it's not an easy gig. What it's they not set out to do because I mean. it's they're 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 trying to make it so user friendly that yeah. um you don't have to do anything. Yeah. And and I know from like working as like a you know a network admin and working on you know device compatibility oh. of even. File types, let alone you know, Every video day, transcoding and codecs. That's all I. That's all I right. deal with. So, but they make it so it's seamless. Like you can go from one device to another device, Windows to Mac, Mac to Linux, no deal. I mean, food do. It's crazy. Um, so that was the big news from Tableau, and you would think just that alone would be yeah. Those enough. are all pretty big. But items. but like there's also like some other news was recently. But wait, announced. there's more. I know it's crazy. Um, and this is just kind of like some you know small stuff, but cool stuff. Uh, Directv is going to be on Roku in the quote unquote next few weeks. Yeah, and and let's just call that the next like quarter. And but no matter what. That's a pretty big deal. Well, right? I've had a lot of people ask because like Roku's the biggest. They own the biggest. They're the market share of yeah. streamers out there. They own. They're the lion's share of them. Um, and uh, people are always asking me like since. And I mean, only I know it only came out um, like less than a month ago, but it's been anticipated for a while. They've been yep. they've been saying this for a while, and then when they released it. It wasn't on Roku, so everyone. Or, or I've had numerous comments and emails yeah. um, asking me when's it going to be on Roku. Like I like like I work for Directv, yeah. um, but I said I don't know. I mean, I just I, from what I you've heard, it's the next few weeks. Right, but that's what I know now. Even if you say like the next quarter, right, 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 right. Like so, that's that's pretty soon, and that's a really big deal. There's some valuable like stuff that is owned right content that is owned by direct tv right now oh yeah well yeah well like the now sir it's essentially a cable package full, yeah full-on cable pack it's missing cbs but <laughs> based on this next thing that i'm going to share with you cbs and this happened they just signed like at the day of recording on the fourth and this wasn't a CES announcement this was kind of like during ces i'm yeah. sure they'll say something tomorrow because they just signed the deal I'm not kidding, like an hour or two before I came over here right. to record. Um, they, CBS joined Hulu because um, Hulu oh, is wow. – well, for the content. Um, yeah. the, the Hulu is planning a live service similar to PlayStation View and Sling TV and Direct TV now. Yeah. Um, they've locked – since the parent companies of Hulu essentially own Fox, ABC, and uh, NBC because it's Comcast – um, Disney and um, oh, who owns Fox? Escapes me. Whatever. Um, I can't even remember at this point. It'll. Oh, I'll kick myself after I'm done recording. But um, so CBS has finally said yep, and they will be available on the live. So that's all the major networks will be on yeah. Hulu's live service. 
Based on that, it's also been said that DirecTV now is now is also close to signing a deal to have CBS on. Because right now, the way the market works is like the for streaming, you need to get CBS All Access, right, and then kind of cobble together. Uh, Everything else around it. Yeah. Well, the other services have ABC, NBC, and Fox, but due to the crazy licensing, it's only the it's typically only the markets where the channel or the station owns the affiliate. Right. I know that sounds, but it's basically. No, no, no. It's, I mean, you went into this in the last. Episode right. It's the major NFL. markets, really, for the most yeah. part. It's the ones that are going to have the most impact and the most people. Yep. Now they they've signed, you know, some like um, Sling has signed some deals here and there with other people, and so has PlayStation and so or Sony rather, and so has Directv. Right. So you really kind of just have to go into each one and see if they serve you up live. And if they don't, a lot of them do it on demand, like for all of the right. content. So you just can't watch it live. So that is a lot of big news that hit at CES. And they're not even done. This is just day one and day two of the press. The actual CES doesn't start till Thursday. I know this gets released Monday. So, But the t- at this time of recording, it, the, the information I'm sharing with you is just the stuff that was released to the press yeah. before the live event. It's basically the day before. The but I'm pretty event. sure that's everything. They usually don't. I mean, I'm, they might hold something back, but I mean. Well, they want to get the press exactly. riled up. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I to me, I think the big trend, right, is um, simplification, right? Like, that's what's coming out of, like, they're trying to make it easier for people to stream. And what you're seeing with that is a lot of people starting to do uh, deals with different services, right? Like, and so it's, it's, it's a typical market trend where you see more and more consolidation around like different partners. And I, I think what we're going to end up with is you're just going to have different distribution channels than what traditional cable has been. And you'll have the content owners, right. and that'll be that. Yep. And I mean, it, it's kind of you're talking eight, like the eighteen and some odd million households. Yeah, it's a lot of customers. What's funny is Dennis and I were talking about this uh, before we started uh, recording, and like cord cutting is a story right now. It is like it's a it's a thing, and it's it's an interesting topic because it is. It is still happening. It's still hot. It's still emerging. Right. Whatever. And it's changing something that's use. fairly like it's been the way things have been well, done yeah, for thirty cable, years. You get, I mean, yes, yeah. sure, there were some people who had just an antenna, but many, many people, like yeah, almost the vast all majority of the households, at one point have paid TV had, of some sort. Yes, and now that's kind of going away. You have when 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 you're looking at only ninety eight. I know this sounds ridiculous, but only 98 million households with cable these days, that's a huge drop off from well, their peak. And and one of the things we said before was that it's the first time it's been under 100 million households well, in kind of, a long time. Yeah, well, it fell like roughly about a well, year. Well, that's what I mean. Less than, a little less than a year. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because it like in, yeah, because in quarter three of 2015, they had 100, they were just a hair over 100 million. And then it went below that, and it's been tumbling since. And it's been going down between 1% and 2% a year. And 1% or 2% of 100 million is, you know, a pretty big hunk of people. Well, and, and that's where I was going with this. Is So what we were talking about is, like, right now, this is a story. And eventually, it will stop being a story because it will just be an accepted thing. Yeah, it'll be the norm. That is, Bain yeah, norm. that it's – and I don't think it will – I don't think it'll be one of those things where, you know, 50 million households are streaming before the coverage of this dies down. I think it'll be one of those things where, you know, 30% of the market is captured by streaming and then it will die down as like, oh, yeah, it's an inevitable trend. It's going to go like the, the traditional paid services will either adapt or they'll die out. Yeah. Well, there's an interesting subtext here too that I didn't I didn't get to. And the bulk, if you if you actually go to the Nielsen reports, 
the bulk of the pay TV losses were in tel- telecom. And when right. I say that, I mean the, the Verizon telecom, side. Yeah. Well, your AT and T and your Verizon right. were the two big players there. And with AT and T coming out with Direct TV now, and then you also have Dish Network coming out with Sling and this streaming device, their TV device. Yeah. You're talking about heavy hitters in the pay TV industry yep. that are making a play in cord cutting. In one direction, right. Now, I'm not saying – I would say that Dish is kind of more all in than AT&T is because AT&T is still very they, – they, they still consider pay TV, I think, their core business. Sure. But it to me, it seems – But they're though, hedging. Yeah, they're hedging. But to me, it seems Dish is really kind of – with the device they've come out with – they're, they seem to be going, and the fact that now you can actually call them and have their satellite technicians come out and install an antenna. It's a big deal. They seem to be thinking, they're going all in here. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see how Verizon responds. That's the thing. And Comcast. Because if yeah, you look, sure. they don't even, they don't have any, nope. well, Verizon has their Go90 thing, which is, I know, it's nothing. And nobody could see the face I made, but I, it's, it's not a good face. Yeah, it's no, it's... It, it it was it was it it was warranted. Yeah. <laughs> it was a warranted face because Go ninety is pretty pitiful. Um, but, but but they have deep pockets. They're bright folks. They can figure out a way to respond. Yeah, and that's what it's I'm, just will they? I yeah, don't know. big companies move slow. So, yeah. but I mean, AT and T really just kind of bought their way into a position, which is a completely viable strategy. Which is what I I'm surprised they haven't done yet, but. I'm kind of looking at the plays out there, and you know, AT and T saw that was really smart that of going out there smart. and picking up Directv yeah. just for the branding alone. Yep. It's a recognizable honestly. brand. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta think. You gotta think. People at Verizon are thinking about it. Right? Yeah, They're, but who who's left? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, unless they go and they, you know, somebody just decided to go out and buy Dish Network. Which is possible because they're not that. But big. they ain't cheap. It's not going to be cheap. But they're not. I mean, they were the. They were the I smaller. I mean, Verizon could do it. Yeah, both those companies, Verizon or Comcast, or could, Com- could well, certainly Comcast could do it. Yeah, um, but it's really this point where the mark. They're kind of. You're starting to see, you know, huge players with a lot of deep pockets trying to pitch like a position on the cord cutting side of this coin. And it's interesting. It's just it, it kind of just goes to show you that it's 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 not a fad. Yeah. It's it's you know, it's going to. Uh, it's not a fad. It's a trend. It, it it's yeah. And with that much money behind it, it's something that's going to continue for some time. So. So stay tuned. Yeah, and that music is telling me that it's time to go. So this is Dennis Rostaro. This is Joel Reeves. And we'll see you next time. Take care. I always cut you. Take care. Exactly. I know. <laughs> thanks for listening everybody i wasn't kidding when i uh asked you guys to subscribe in itunes during the show um it's real easy to do it's how shows get ranked in itunes so you know the higher on the list more people listen longer we do the show make more shows we'll do this forever if people are listening so all you have to do is pick up your iphone and the podcast app, you're probably listening to it right now. Hit the little eyeglass in the bottom right-hand corner to search and type Grounded. And then our podcast will come up. You know, it'll say right at the top, Grounded Reason, Internet and Modern TV Technology. Click on it. Bottom right there, it says Podcasts. Underneath, you'll see our logo. You click on that. And right underneath our title, will be a big button that says Subscribe. If it says Unsubscribe, that means you're already subscribed. So don't press that. We really appreciate everybody who listens and supports the show. If you want to get in touch with us, all the contact info is in that show notes there for you to get a hold of us. Easiest way to do it is on Twitter. You can just follow us at Grounded Reason. Again, thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week.